Can you help me find an agent? Now that's a question I get quite often. Many times an actor has decided that getting someone to represent them is a priority for their business plan. Now, for others, it's a frightening proposition. After all, the talent sometimes believe that with an agent, their career will take off. I think it's best to answer the question with another question, or even better, a series of questions. On this episode of Casting Actors Cast, the podcast for actors from a casting director. That's me, Jeffrey Dreisbach. Well, hello and welcome to today's episode of Casting Actors Cast. I'm Jeffrey Dreisbach. I'm the casting director with McCorkle Casting in New York. How are you? It's nice to see you today. I'm so glad that you are here. I like the episode today. I think you're going to learn a lot. This is a lot about um, seeking representation, but asking the right questions before you proceed is a really great tip, I think, and a really great tool that we're going to get into. But first, this is that moment of the podcast, the patio podcast videos, where I get to say thank you so much for tuning in to Casting Actors Cast. If this is your first time here, you are so welcome. I'm so glad that you're here and trying it out. Listen, if you're a longtime listener, I'm so grateful to you for being a longtime listener. It's amazing. The numbers of people who are downloading the podcast continues to explode, and I couldn't be more grateful. Now, I'd like to just take a moment to thank those folks who are promoting Casting Actors Cast on their websites and their media. And so I thought it would be a good idea if I just returned the favor. So here is that couple of minutes of those promos of those people who are supporting the podcast. So if you give a listen, we're going to come back right back. Wow. We're going to come right back and um, get right into the subject. So thank you very much. This episode of Casting Actors Cast would not be possible without the following cross-promotional shout-outs. Actors Connection. Please do yourself a favor and check out Actors Connection. They provide classes, seminars, workshops with working industry professionals to help you advance your acting career. Go to ActorsConnection.com slash New York for their current calendar of amazing classes, workshops, and events. WeAudition.com WeAudition.com is the video chat community to audition, self-tape, rehearse, and get expert industry advice. Find a rehearsal or self-tape partner instantly. Earn money for rehearsing with other actors. And as a special incentive to Casting Actors Cast listeners, you will receive 25% off membership using the code CAC25. That's CAC25 for a membership discount. WeAudition.com Acting and Voice Studios. I am excited to share that Acting and Voice Studios will provide top quality acting training for film and television to actors all around the world. Check out my bi-monthly blog posts on their website while learning more about classes for adults and young people, including voiceover and acting demo production. Go to actingandvoicestudios.com. Are you interested in honing your voiceover skills? My good friend and voice talent Philip Galinsky is running yourvostudio.com. Coaching the creative process for voiceover artists is their passion. So go to yourvostudio, all one word, dot com for more information. Thanks, Philip. Now, other places in addition to the ones I've just mentioned uh, that I am teaching at include the Growing Studio and T. Schreiber Studio. So I ask you to go ahead and please visit their websites as well and check out the schedule at castingactorscast.com slash classes workshops. And I hope that we can work together soon. Thank you. 
And so welcome back. I hope that wasn't too painful for you. But those folks uh, that have been so great and there are many of those studios that I'm teaching at. And I just love the fact that we're a community of like minded individuals trying our very, very best to help actors with their show business career, their acting career. So here are the questions that I think are important that you answer first. Instead of thinking to yourself, oh, I've got to get an agent. Let's ask the kinds of questions that you need to be ready to answer, not necessarily with an agent, but for yourself. So the first question you want to ask yourself is, is my acting in the best possible shape? Well, that sounds like a, an obvious question, doesn't it? But that means if you have just come off a BFA degree celebration, you know, you had your, your school is done and now you're ready to face the professional world, cool. Maybe you've gotten your master's degree and you want to see what the profession is holding for you. Great. Glad to have you aboard. But you know what? When your showcase happened at school and now you're looking to go into the profession, the thing of it is, you've got to stay in shape with your acting. I promise you, it is not like riding a bicycle. Do you know, I don't think I remember the last time I rode a bicycle, but I can tell you, I think I could get on it. I think I could probably do pretty well. I know that acting isn't that way. You have to stay sharp. You have to stay with it. In addition, there are so many classes, both online and in person now, that you can take that will help you feel more comfortable and more confident. So really evaluate where you are with your acting. If it's been a while, maybe it's a good idea to get into a scene study class. Maybe it's a good idea to take a film and television class. Teaching a class from stage to screen has been extraordinarily popular, and I love teaching that class. It's a great class for those of you who have had a lot of theatrical training and not quite sure about your film and television work. So that is something to definitely consider. Is your acting in the best possible shape? If it is, then that's great. That means that you can talk about your work in a positive way should you get asked those questions from an agent. All right, let's move on to, uh, well, no, I guess there's one other point I want to make. You need to be 100% sure that you are what I call actor ready. Just be 100% sure. That was the little extra point I missed. Now, the next question. Do you have the right credits for your current brand? Here's what I mean by that. Uh, if you've just gotten out of school and you're really interested in film and television work, do you have credits that support your film and television career? Now, uh, again, this is not to put undue pressure or to make you feel upset in any way, because, you know, there are all kinds of actors with good training under their belts, not having a film or television class, you know, doing film and television work. But I guess what I'm saying is, does your resume does your previous background fit into your current branding? In other words, your brand refers to how you want to be seen by others. And so if you have um, the right credits, if you have the right credentials, if you have the right experience, if you've worked with the right people, if you feel like you've gotten yourself into a really good headspace for a, a film career, then by all means, that should be reflected on your resume as well as your picture, as well as your head, your own head about that. So do you have the right credits? And I don't talk about direct credits. Again, I'm trying to just get you to think in terms of if you don't have film and television credits, it's OK to still want a film and television career. But that means perhaps some classes that talk about your film and television training would be in order. Perhaps you would embellish the resume just a little bit with a little more information about those film and television classes you had while you were in school. Perhaps some of those student films that you participated in would benefit from a little more explanation on your resume. So really helping the person who's looking at your marketing materials is going to get an idea about you being ready for film and television. So this isn't a freak out moment. It's just a way to calmly take a look and decide how can I shift these things around to give the right intention for what I'm interested in doing. Okay.
So it's just simply define your interest with the focus you place on your marketing. Simple as that. Next question. Does your picture and resume reflect your energy and personality? Now, I've done and mentioned pictures and resumes, you know, all throughout this podcast. It still happens to be the calling card in the industry. It still happens to be extremely important that you have a current picture that reflects exactly the way you look now. Your energy and personality coming through on a professional headshot can make a sincere impact on those agents and managers who might be interested in working with you. Does your picture reflect those traits that are really marketable for you in that arena. If that is the case, then the agent is going to respond to that and give you an interview and give you those opportunities that you've been longing for. But you have to make sure that you have your picture and resume in the absolute perfect shape. Again, I'm not trying to make you crazy here. I know this is just sounding like a checklist again of do's and don'ts, but more important, it really just defies logic sometimes, frankly, uh, from my point of view, that actors are excited about an acting career, but then don't spend enough time on those tools that can ha actually help them get to the level they need, want or need to be at. Finding an agent means all of these pieces of that puzzle are already in place. So the materials you are marketing can go a long way towards getting good representation. The next question, have you continued training and growing your professional contacts? Um, are you putting yourself out there for readings, for Zoom readings, for example? Are you taking classes with Maybe some casting directors who are good teachers as well to help you learn additional elements uh, about that area that you're interested in. If it's film and television, if it's auditioning for a TV pilot, whatever the coursework is, are those contacts something you are maintaining? Are you writing down those folks? Because after all, continuing education, investing is really an investment in yourself as a professional. So it's imperative for an agent or a manager who might be looking at your resume to see that you are continuing to grow through education and training, through classes, through workshops, through seminars. Next question. If you're looking for an agent, it's important that you can answer this question. Are you going to be available for the auditions? Are you going to be available if you get a call back? Are you going to be available if you book this job? So a, an agent wants to know that you are ready to go, <laughs> literally. And so it's really valuable for you to keep all of that information in place. So if you have a commitment to a money gig, um, you know, a, a hustle job. No, that's not what it's called. It's called a side hustle, uh, a side hustle. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm getting so old. So if you've got a side hustle, but that the side hustle is really, really important for you to stay alive and pay your rent and eat, uh, then maybe that's going to limit the choices that you have available to you. I'm not saying you can't do that, but maybe then you can only do jobs that are in town. So maybe those opportunities that show up for regional theaters, or if it's a film that's shooting out of town, you need to be able to be very clear and the logistics of that side hustle job or those other commitments outside of acting need to be put in perspective. So being available for the auditions means being available for the callbacks, which means be available for those bookings. Nothing worse than being able to say, I can't take this job because of some logistical situation that you find yourself in. Now, life happens. I know that. But it really is to the degree that you want to grow your professional actor resume means that you need to probably make some sacrifices and make some compromises. After all, you know what? That's part of life. Life just hands us those situations sometimes. And how you handle it can make an impact on your career. So I guess the valuable point about being available for that is that just simply agents and managers 
need to know that you are ready, willing, and able to take on those opportunities that you are seen for. Next question. Have you researched the representation that is right for you? Have you done the research? Now, I've done several podcasts on getting an agent or an agent finding you, and I don't want to sort of go over those, but I encourage you to listen to those previous podcasts. But doing some research on your part can really help you see if that agency has a, here's a good word, proclivity towards the kinds of actors and acting that you're interested in doing. So some agencies are known for having a really great stable of young musical theater talent. And then other agencies are really great for, you know, film and television situations. Then there are those middle size agencies that really cover the board and they have a commercial department and a legitimate theater department and a film and television department. So maybe that agency is really great because it covers a lot of different areas. So which is the right one for you? Do some research. It's easy to be done online where you can get a lot of information about different agencies, not only about who's being represented by some of these agencies, but are they the right fit for you? That's the question that you will only find if you do the research. So having a strategy with good research, it just makes sense, right? Okay, now that you've answered these questions, hopefully you've answered these questions, hopefully you're still with me. You haven't said, what the hell is this guy talking about? I know, it sounds like a lot. But if you've answered these questions, now we can spend a moment on how agents find actors. Make sense? You've got those questions answered. You are ready. You feel good about all of the choices that you've made for yourself. And there are basically, in my view, four ways that agents find actors. And this is what usually happens. First, and the first one on the list, and in order of how often they happen, the first one is what's called a referral. <laughs> that means a recommendation that comes to an agent from a casting director, maybe from a director that really loves your work and wants to put in a good word at their agency, or perhaps they have a relationship with an agent. Agents and directors have really good relationships sometimes, but also the relationship between a casting director and an agency, boy, an agent calls up and says, this is somebody you should see. You know, that happens frequently. So a referral um, from another professional is oftentimes the first most direct and uh, most popular way that actors find agencies. Um, an actor who might be currently working with that agent that you're working with. Maybe that actor says, you know, I have an agent, he might really like your work. And so there might be an introduction from a fellow actor saying, I'll introduce you to my agent. That happens too. Those are usually the best ways that a meeting happens, quite frankly. Now, number two for how an agent finds talent to represent is a showcase or a performance that an agent sees. That can often lead to a meeting as well. So you're in something, you send out a postcard or an email, or your friend has an agent that's coming to see you. Any of those are really effective ways, but seeing you actually doing the work, and if you do a really good job, if you've made some really great choices, if the part really fits you well, and it's well done, Boy, all of that just speaks volumes. Many times agents will want to have a chat with you after an excellent performance, especially if they know that you're not being represented. So that's the number two, even in a showcase. Um, if you're right out of school, you know that your showcase, and, and this year a lot of showcases were online, for example. You know, those actually got a lot more focus and attention than the live showcases, I think. I was able to see so many more showcases online and really see the talent in a great way. So don't dismiss those showcases that might be out there. Even if it's a small theater company that's doing good work, make sure that you put the word out that you're being, you're it'd be in a production that you are doing something and you would certainly like to be seen. So the last and the least effective method 
is an actor trying to just reach out to an agent with some kind of, you know, logical connection that my best friend's next door neighbor's uncle said that you were an agent and I'm an actor and I would love to meet with you. <laughs> you get the idea. Now, I don't want to be dismissive of that. That doesn't mean you shouldn't try and do a direct contact by sending a picture and resume or an email or snail mail. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't do that. But it means that those are, frankly, the least effective methods of doing that. So I hope that doesn't dissuade you, but I also think that just having a realistic understanding exactly of how the industry works can mean a lot and probably save you a lot of time. I've also had the situation where an actor works very hard without an agent, and there are jobs out there for actors without agencies, and you just have to keep your eyes and your ears open. You have to use actors' access, uh, breakdown services. You just have to kind of figure out the best way to hear about projects. And many actors have had successful careers without agencies. But there comes a time, and there might be a time where you book something. And because you book something kind of meaningfully, maybe it could be a good idea, I'm not saying this 100%, I'm just saying it has happened, that you could go to an agent and say, I would like some help in negotiating this contract. Now, if you don't mind giving up 10%, because that's what it's going to cost you, it might mean an agent would be happy to negotiate for you, and that might be the impetus to establishing a relationship. Now, be very careful. I'm not saying that this is an automatic thing, and certainly there are some less than scrupulous agencies out there that would just want to take your money, no big deal, but... It can be a way by which you get some additional focus and intention through an agent by bringing a job to that agency. It could mean that they are impressed by the way that you're working. Maybe it's the kind of job that they have more job opportunities for you for, and so therefore it could make sense. So it just means that you have to keep it all in perspective. So. Gosh, we talked about all of those questions that you need to have in place first, followed by the most logical way in which agents find talent and managers. Managers are agents in this podcast. I hope under, you understand are synonymous with each other. But answering these questions and then understanding the goal of representation and what you are doing to achieve that goal will ultimately lead to a result that can advance your career and keep you working. Thank you so much for listening and tuning in to this episode of Casting Actors Cast. I hope to see and hear you next time on the episode of Casting Actors Cast. I'm Jeffrey Dreisbach. Thanks so much. Casting Actors Cast is made possible with your support just by listening. Please like, share, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts.